All right, this is gonna be my uh, stack predictor. So the way this stack predictor works is it takes a variety of factors, um, some technical indicators of the industry, like moving averages of various windows. Um, it takes like indexes of the market, like the S&P, and it also takes uh, top uh, market movers like Apple, Google, Tesla, all those, right? Um, convolutes that into some data set, and then that's where I get these uh, testing files. So uh, another file generates the data. Uh, that file is not very original, and even the creator of that file, like obviously, they didn't come up with the uh, technical indi in indicators, those are just industry standards. Um, but anyway, so I load this in, um, set it up to train on a GPU, and then we're doing a generating adversarial network with a, a few different modifications. So this one has some uh, gated recurrent units, which are like uh, LRUs that offer some history to the uh, the model but uh, these tend to be more performant in these types of tasks um, so we design our our network and we have a generator discriminator implement a uh, gradient pen penalty uh, I always mispronounce it but it's WP standing for wish to shoot uh, gradient pen penalty um, and yeah, so I might upload this, but the the model might be important, but without knowing how to manipulate the data, it's a little bit hard. And uh, my notebooks are like working version, so they they're not just made to run. But I'll probably upload one that's just made to run later on. So each version has five thousand training epochs past the the starting version version just to make sure there's no divergence because I saw divergence still with this gradient penalty stuff and all that in uh, like 10% of the models it would just diverge so I start out with a 500 epoch model and then now it's uh, 10,500 because two 5,000 training iterations so then we'll load our training data this is the training um, like code and you can see our losses and whatnot and it saves it off and then we load our testing data we load the version that we want and then we do some rescaling and formatting run it through and get our predictions and these are the predictive values and then here are them graphed um, so what this is doing is allowing it to predict about three days in advance. Uh, you can change that, but it'll predict three days in advance and then it'll, you know, as market data became available to refeed that back into the, the network and then you can keep on predicting that way. Um, so it's not, it's not the most accurate, but it does tend to predict um, movements well but not prices well and you can see in like certain sharp dips it's not gonna be as reactive and I believe that's an artifact of the moving averages and here you can see you have a quite a sharp bull run and doesn't really uh, capture that um, then obviously as new features become available towards the end it diverges even more um, but you can rechain this network like however often you want so i don't think of that as a an issue and you can also build upon past iterations um, so let's get on to the numbers so we just do an end date of one year and then we evaluate our predictions. We start with a thousand dollars, and we do the predicted and the real, and then we see 
how much money would we have if we just held our money? And then, like, how much, uh, how much would we have if we employed some sort of uh, trading strategy based on, you know, predictive movements? Uh, this could be like selling uh, calls or puts or whatever. Um, and so we see with the predicted outcome, we make uh, $1,246. And with just the holding strategy for a whole year, in, in this particular market, we made 1076 And we can see the, the start and end dates. Um, and those are one year of trading days, so it doesn't include weekends and holidays, so that's uh, the mismatch there. But anyway, so we can see where we're at is like somewhere over here. Uh, yeah, somewhere in here. And the price didn't actually go up that much. So this is a uh, over a long term type of strategy, and uh, it's better at capturing gains by predicting losses than by predicting uh, increases because you could just hold the money if you thought it was going to increase. So that's the point here. Here's a time period over which um, the increase wasn't as much as you would expect for holding. So yeah, for our holding strategy, that's where we get, uh, this is a search for a maximum, but for this one, that's where we get that, uh, what, what is that, 3x gain. Um, and then you can see the prices. So our model predicted the price would even be a little bit higher than it actually was. So it went from $36 to 39 in a year of trading days, and that's the end price. So uh, pretty, pretty powerful strategy. Um, and of course, it, this area needs some more research, but that's the introduction.